NFL week four Sunday's coming. Let's talk about it. This is the subscriber only edition unlisted until Sunday afternoon. Thank you for supporting the NFL algorithm. Um, and you know, that that's why I do this. I've sold thousands of dollars worth of NFL algorithms this year. I'm, I'm happy with the sales and I'm also happy with the results from Thursday night because I told everyone to take Cincinnati team points because it was consistent in all scenarios even though the alternate projection changes because there's a new injury report, but originally it was 27 and they hit 27 exactly. And if you remove Tua and the other wide receiver out of the game, it made this 27, 15, which unfortunately Tua had that grotesque injury, uh, not something to, to celebrate, but it's what it did do when you pulled him out of the game and put Bridgewater. I mean, just unbelievable. Um, algorithm does it again. It's the way it works. So hopefully that's a sign for a good week. Let's see. Sunday and Monday, let's take a look at these games. I have done some things to the injury report and to the rosters, which I will discuss in a second, especially when it comes to kickers. But let's take a look at everything because this is my first time looking at it uh, since I updated. All right, well, number one is still the Eagles. Um, crushing it and covering. Uh, I mean, it, they, they're just powerful uh, and they're at home. So this is all current season stats. So even though I feel like Jacksonville has been playing really, really well, um, says the Eagles still run over them. Okay. Uh, Indianapolis over Tennessee scared. I'm scared here. But uh, one thing I did do, let's talk about this, is Indianapolis Rodrigo Blankenship turned into a free agent. So I had to adjust that at the last minute to get everyone's kickers correct. Otherwise, Indianapolis had two kickers in here. I believe everybody just has still one kicker. Yeah, free agency, Rodrigo Blanche, free agent. Here, actually, that's interesting. If Harrison Butker is out, for example, we're, we're going to talk about injuries in a second, but basically everyone's got one kicker to get this right. And the other thing is Detroit signed a new kicker and I had to give Detroit's kicker, the other kicker stats to get somebody in there for Detroit. That's Dominic Eberly. I gave him Austin Siebert's stats for the year so that we have a kicker with statistics in there, even though those are not his stats. So those are two things I did um, adjusting stuff because it was needed to do that, to get more streamlined, correct data for kickers in here. So let's go back to the picks for a second. So your, your survivor pool pick of the day is supposed to be the Eagles, if you haven't taken them already. Next is supposed to be the Colts. Um, I don't, you know me, I just don't like the Colts. I'm scared, but don't ever listen to me. Just always listen to the algorithm. Even alternate is good. Tennessee is just not the team they were last year, I guess, is the issue. And Indianapolis is at home. So it says they cover more than this field goal. Wow. I mean, like points are crazy here. Wow. I, I don't, I don't get it, but that's what it's doing. Minnesota over New Orleans, um, Minnesota away at New Orleans. I'm scared of this game, but don't listen to me. Don't ever listen to me. 20 to nine alternate score. Very, very low scoring game here this Minnesota New Orleans game. I wonder what the injury situation is. Let's, let's go check something before we review the rest of the games, which is all these questionable people, who are they? And on what team are they? Well, heavy questionables with Arizona. Marquise Brown, Matt Prater. Uh, Carolina, Tampa, Julio Jones again with the knee, PCL, that's posterior cruciate ligament. <clears throat> if they're naming the ligament, that's trouble. <laughs> that's trouble. That means it's a problem. Ligaments don't heal within a week. I mean, they'll, they'll get better, but they won't heal, heal, and he's going to have to take it easy. So, so this is another injury situation on Tampa Bay. You can see, yeah, injured kicker and somebody else may be in there for Kansas City. Uh, Detroit, Atlanta, Miami not playing on Larry played. And that's two right there. Um, the rest of them, fairly reasonable. A little bit of injuries on New Orleans is uh, – is uh, what's his face? Jameis Winston playing on the Saints. Where are you, Saints? The quarterback situation is nobody. What? 
the Saints have no quarterback. So it's Taysom Hill is what's happening here. And I don't think I've removed his – see, uh, the, the, the Saints are just a disaster. Did did Jameis Winston get traded? No, he's fully, fully injured, right? That's what's going on. Oh, gosh. Man, yeah, Saints are a mess. So this is why it's predicting such a low-scoring game, though, and I understand why it's a little screwed up in the Saints game because we don't have any quarterback other than Taysom Hill. I don't know if he's playing – so difficult game here to read from the algorithm, but as I've said in previous videos, the Saints are just screwed up when it comes to the algorithm because of the way they play Taysom Hill, and it's confusing. And so that's enough of a reason to be confused about this game. There's a and they're and they're at home, so like I'm just, I don't know what to do. Chargers and Texans says Chargers away. Houston's still Houston. Minus 250. Line's not great up here. Giants at home over the Bears. I like that. I said the L word, so watch out. I like that because I don't like the Bears. I think the Giants are a little better, even though Dallas did Dallas play it better. Three points, three. I don't know. It's starting to look like a tough board this week. This is not easy. Nothing's screaming out saying play it yet, right? Detroit over Seattle is minus 175. That's crazy. People have respect for Detroit. Why? What's their record? They're not good. Like Detroit is always talk, right? They're one and two. Who'd they beat? The Redskins? The, the Commanders? Right? That's who they beat, right? We can check. Um, they beat, yeah, I think they beat Washington. Yeah, they beat Washington by outscoring Washington. Shocker, they're not good. Like, hmm. All right, so so he favors them over Seattle. I hate that, even though they're at home. I hate it. Says this game's 21 17. Interesting that the over under. So, what's what's supposed to happen is Seattle's going to slow them down. Look at the alternate score of 16 17. So at least you can play the under here in Detroit. I understand why people think there's more points in Detroit, the, the dome, and they supposedly put up, but Seattle's supposed to slow that down. And so they got a 10-point under. So I will play the under in this game. I will not bet Detroit, and I will not bet Seattle because the, the algorithm was screwing with Seattle this year too a little bit, but I will bet the under because that's 10-point difference and a crazy difference in alternate projection. It's a 15 point difference when it comes to alternate projection. Are the defenses healthy? Uh, Detroit's defense is injured seven. See, Seattle's defense is not hurting. Uh, I mean, under Detroit points in this game is probably a good bet also. So keep an eye on that. So that, that, that sounds fun. Baltimore and Buffalo thinks Baltimore can beat Buffalo at home at the underdog line. After Buffalo just loses to Miami, Miami's defense holds up. What's the alternate score in this game? Even more so for Baltimore because Buffalo defensive injuries, 28%. I think that's the secret to this game. I think that's why you can get three points with the Ravens and they're probably, you got Lamar Jackson going up against an injured defense that's a recipe for an upset. And I agree with the algorithm with this, even though Buffalo is an exceptionally good offensive team. So the over under is set at 51 and we have it at 59. They're probably going to blow past this 51 over because Lamar is going to keep coming down the field and Josh Allen's going to probably answer. So over and I'm going to take Baltimore plus the three on the round round, maybe get a tie if Buffalo wins this late with a field goal. Um, but this could be a very interesting game. It will be an interesting game, and I hope that's on to watch. Green Bay, I'm wearing a Green Bay shirt right now, which you can't see, over the Patriots at home, of course, and they are minus 425. So they're way down here, and it says, you know, here's what's fascinating, right, is in the previous, when I was up in Green Bay a few weeks ago, and they were playing the Bears at home, it really gave them the nod at like 42 points or something. And they ended up putting up 26. Do you know how difficult it is going to be for this team to cover nine points against the Patriots, even though it's at home? This is a team that also plays in the cold. It's not that cold this year, right now anyway. But th this is a team with Belichick. I, I, that's a, 
fantastic amount of points for the Patriots. At least the algorithm says that this is a super low scoring game. Um, that that's what to do here. Patriot, I, I I will take Patriots plus nine, even though. I mean, at what magnifier do you have to put this up to for the Packers to to beat them by more than nine? A magnifier of like seven. So that gets only gets them a six point victory, and you've got a 77-24 game for the Eagles. See how ridiculous this is? It, it you just trust trust the algorithm for the most part. Like it knows what it's doing, and and so, I mean, you've got a huge buffer supposedly with nine points. Um, I shouldn't say a huge buffer. It could be an extra touchdown for Green Bay that, that wins this, but it's saying that it's, a, it's more of a defensive battle. So it's saying under in the Patriots plus the points because this minus 425 is unbettable. Um, too much. Jets over Pittsburgh. You will not get me to bet the Jets algorithm. Nope. I don't trust you that much. But that's what it says. Um, and you can see Pittsburgh – let themselves down against what was it Cincinnati which proved themselves better against Miami too so it's kind of like Pittsburgh's defense had trouble with the or offense had trouble with a good defense in Cincinnati so uh I of course I do not take the Jets uh, so watch them win um because I refuse to take them the alternate score is what 18 13 So um, weird. I mean, it gives them two touchdowns and a field goal and says they beat Steelers. So for the way, there you go. Rams barely over the 40. No, but not an alternate projection because watch out for the Rams defense at 21% injured. Yep. I, yep. So, okay. Keep an eye on this. This is, this is saying that it doesn't really favor the Rams because look at the alternate projection. You, you want to look when it flips over like this and the game is way down here, you do not want to take the Rams. Algorithm is not saying take the Rams. Algorithm saying that, that if they were fully healthy, you could consider taking the Rams, but they're not defensively. And it says they lose this game close. So it says really take San Francisco. So that, that's a toss up game. Carolina, Arizona, remember how injured Arizona was? Carolina can win this game at home. I, I like, oh, said the L word though. I like that the algorithm is bringing in and flipping Arizona over. It's like, it's got to week four now. And now it's stopped phase favoring Arizona because they're clearly not the team they were last year. And, and so you're seeing it here in a team that's what? The Panthers are one and two, I think right now. Uh, Carolina is... One and two, yet it's favoring them. Arizona is also one and two. Um, look at the points for and points again. You can see, look at the points against on Arizona. Yeah, I, so I agree with this. I agree with this. That's that's actually a reasonable. It gives them a two point game and gives them a seven point game and alternate projection because of the injuries to the defense and also the questionable injuries to the offense. So this is actually a really strong pick. See how you, you read the algorithm and dig into it. You can see the Rams are not a great pick and Carolina is a much better pick in, in this order here. So I hope you understand what's going on here. Commanders over the Cowboys. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Super low scoring game. What? What? Dak probably wants to play. No injuries. What? Why? I don't. Washington looks like they stink. Oh, what happened? What did we just do. Washington looks like they're terrible. Why are you doing this? I don't get it. Um, I, I don't know. Washington. It gives the. It gives them the nod with receivers. It gives them slight nod with running back. Uh, Cooper Rush is playing. Yeah, they, they, they're not pulling Cooper Rush out. He's like three and out, right? Uh, or two and one. Or when I was two and out. Cooper Rush is two and out, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm talking too much. Uh, well, I'll stop arguing with the algorithm because I'm usually wrong. So I, it, it says, but it's way down here and it's low scoring. And I mean, I guess you can take a plus three and a half, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Denver and the Raiders gives the Denver a two point game, both scenarios and they're an underdog line, but they're away. Raiders have not been impressive this year and the Raiders 
are 0 and 3. That's why they haven't been impressive this year. And Denver has Russell Wilson, who is Denver's what? Two, what one and two or two and one? Two and one. Yeah. See, he's he finds a way to win, even when you think he won't. So even though they're away, the Raiders have shown problem. And do the Raiders have any defensive injuries? Slightly. Both teams have slight eight percent. So empirically, Denver wins this game and they're an underdog line. So again, once again, it's going with Denver at the underdog. And then Cleveland and Atlanta, where whoa, whoa, because Cleveland is defensively injured, watch out. 47% defensive injuries. What is that all about? Let's go take a look at that. So we're going to sort this by descending by C score and then by team. And we're going to look at Cleveland, which is starting right here. Okay. So we'll look at it from here down. So what it is, is Jadavian Clowney and Miles Garrett are both questionable with something. And uh, Anthony Walker's on the IR. So these are huge defensive players that are not 100%. That is what is making it look like Atlanta scores more points, right? A team that has scored and they have no defensive injuries. So this game is ripe for an upset in Atlanta. Uh, as you can see by the projected score here, flipping around completely. And it's a 33 22 game for Atlanta due to defensive injuries. So you've got an over under total set at 47 and it, it's predicting 54, but here it's predicting 55 and Atlanta's team points. So Atlanta's team points is a real sneaky bet here because they're probably going to put up more than they should because of Cleveland's injuries. And it says they were going to put up points anyway and without that. So that that's a premium pick as Atlanta team points. Uh, Tampa Bay and the Chiefs, 18-17 Tampa Bay, both teams, I believe, dealing with questionable injuries, at least kicker on the Chiefs and receivers on the Bucks. This, of course, is one of those games. you got Brady and Mahomes. It's in Tampa Bay. Brady's still married. Uh, extremely close game, and the spread is 0.5. Are you kidding? Hilarious. It's a pick em game, and you take the home team, and you take Brady in a pick em game, right? So that kind of makes sense. So – all that being said, what's my round robin going to, en going to encompass today? Well, I will take the Eagles to win at minus 255. That's not awful line for a team to win at the top, survivor pool style. So I will put that on there and come up with seven picks here. I refuse to take Indianapolis, even though I'm supposed to. So I'm staying away from that. So watch them win. I refuse to bet on this game because I don't like what the algorithm does with the Saints. And I have no idea. I also don't like the Vikings. Um, this is a not good line at minus 250 for the Chargers. So I'm going to stay away from that. I do like the Giants. I said like again. It's a four-point game. They're at least home against the Bears. I'll consider this because they're home. I, I'm okay with this. This should, this should win. So you got Eagles, Giants. Take in the under in this Detroit Seattle game because it's set at 48, which is apparently totally wrong. This is way under that. So I'm going to take under 48. Okay. So we got under 48 Eagles, Giants. It's three. This Baltimore Buffalo game was because of Buffalo's injuries. I said I would take Baltimore plus three, and I will. And I'll probably also take the over 51, believe it or not, on a different ticket. But the Buffalo plus three, or sorry, the Ravens plus three because of those injuries to Buffalo's defense is, is why I'm taking that. Uh, this game, the Packers Patriots game, was the Patriots plus nine, plus nine here, because they just cannot get the Packers to win this game by more than five or six, regardless. And I understand why there. Uh, so that's a pick. So one, two, under the yeah the Detroit Seattle game was under right the three Ravens plus three is four Patriots plus nine is five. Um, I said Carolina wins this game. That's six. 
I said the Raiders is seven, but I said Atlanta team points is eight, and maybe the Bucks is nine. There's actually nine picks on here that you can take. Um, so I hope that helps, guys. And this looks like a better looking week for a lot of reasons. Because you can see I got question marks up here because I don't like Indianapolis and Tennessee hasn't shown anything yet. I don't know what's going on with Derrick Henry or what's happening there. The Saints, it doesn't read properly. But a lot of this other stuff is looking pretty good, as you can see by, by digging into the defensive injury number and why it's important to update this injury report on Sunday to see if anything changes because it might and people might move around. So good luck, everyone. May all your picks be winning and enjoy week four football.